Hello and welcome to Lecture 16 of Aerospace Propulsion. Today we'll continue our discussion of turbo machinery in our new efficient aircraft engines. Last time we introduced basic turbo machinery concepts, but today we'll focus on turbine and compressor design. We'll introduce the use of velocity triangles as a way to think through the flow in turbo machinery blade rows, and then we'll go through design guidelines for turbines and compressors. And finally, we'll briefly introduce some spanwise or non-mean radius effects. The key messages to take away from today's lecture are that the use of velocity triangles allows for easy switching between reference frames when the flow moves from a stationary to a rotating blade row or vice versa. The Zweifel coefficient is a way to assess how well a turbine is going to work and should generally be less than or equal to 0.8. Compressor design feasibility can be assessed using a diffusion factor, and this should generally be less than 0.45. And to achieve radially uniform work input, flow deflection must be greater at the hub than at the tip, but greater tip losses yield less pressure rise there. It's a brief reminder of something we introduced, a couple things we introduced at the end of the last lecture. We introduced the work coefficient, which came from non-dimensionalizing the lower work equation, and this was our, our work coefficient psi, which is basically our, our change in tangential velocity divided by our mean blade speed. We also introduced the flow coefficient, which is a normaliza normalization of the axial velocity by our blade speed. We use the symbol phi for this. In compressors, this tends to be in the range of 0.4 to 0.75, and in turbines, uh, for core turbines, 0.5 to 0.65, and for low pressure turbines, 0.7 to 1.1. Good combinations of work and flow coefficient in terms of being able to achieve high efficiency are not sort of predictable a priori, but are known from experience. Um, so the plot here is called the Smith chart, and this is uh, looks at the variation of work of efficient con or contours of constant efficiency for uh, plotted against work coefficient and flow coefficient for turbines. Um, so the solid curves uh, show uh, approximate curves of constant efficiency and the number in a circle on each curve is the uh, adiabatic efficiency associated with that curve. Unfortunately the designs for which have the very highest efficiencies um, are often elusive um, in terms of being able to implement them due to geometric and other constraints um, and we'll talk a little bit about why this curve looks the way it does in, in a minute or these curves in this whole plot look the way they do in a minute. For compressors, there's no equivalent universal plot like this, um, but uh, the typical range of a work coefficient is between 0.35 and 0.5. One more thing about this chart, you'll see all these data points that indicate values of efficiency at certain combinations of work and flow coefficient. Those all represent actual turbines. So we see this general trend uh, in efficiency that the efficiency gets higher as we move towards the bottom right of the plot, or sorry, the bottom left of the plot. What mechanisms do you think are responsible for these efficiency trends? Um, so to, as a hint, think about the flow velocities and the flow turning. So take a minute and think about this, uh, try to come up with an answer for yourself uh, before you move on to the next part of the video. Um, and we'll also discuss this during the tutorial. <coughs> 